Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back to break down Tuesday's NBA slate. Um, we've got a small little five game. Uh, I believe we have a 12 gamer tomorrow, so we got the, we got the nuts tomorrow. We got good stuff going tomorrow, but we do have this slate tonight. Not an awful slate, um, but you gotta take some risks with some not so fantastic teams. And it's kind of weird. We got two early games, and then we got three later. I guess you can call... I most call the 8 o'clock games the mid-range game, so 9 and on is late. So we've got three later games, but let's hop into this with the Portland Trailblazers. Damian Lillard is going to play tonight, but we don't have a minutes, um, we don't have a minutes limit on him. Nothing has been said about minutes or anything like that, so I don't think I can touch him. Um, if he's going to play reduced minutes, I think I could play Shabazz Napier. Because Napier was seeing 21 when Lillard was out, or when Lillard was in. So if Lillard sits and plays, you know, instead of 36 or 38 or 34 like he was playing, if he plays 28, I think um, Napier gets up to a 30 minute. So he's still viable. Uh, a little overpriced, but an, a, a decent GPP option. Other than that, um, I had Evan Turner in my lineups last night, and then took him out, and he decided to put up 38, <laughs> which is which was just a nightmare. And I played David and Waba instead of him, and then Waba put up like 10. So that was that was a nightmare. I'm not chasing that. The only other guy that I have interest in is Al Farouk Aminu. He should have to play minutes here against the Cavs. The Cavs should inevitably make this go small. Um, Isaiah Thomas returns, so I definitely think they make it go small. So I like Aminu to see 30 minutes at least. And uh, he'll probably be in my lineups. Moving on to Cleveland, LeBron, the one stud on the night. 11-7, um, I'm not playing him tonight. He needs about 66 or 67 to really kill me if the other guys meet value. On DraftKings, uh, uh, he's pretty easy to fit on FanDuel, but he's still really not a must-play over there as well. But he's really easy to fit over there, so um, I'll probably end up playing him there. But on DraftKings, where I do most of my uh, most of my stuff is on DraftKings, I probably won't play him. Uh, I'm looking at the guards, Isaiah Thomas kind of screws everything up. He'll play about 15 minutes, which is not enough to actually play him. If he was playing 15 minutes tomorrow against Boston, I would actually consider playing him, but... With him playing tonight against the Trailblazers, which the reason is, if you didn't know, is they, I believe the medical doctor, or the doctors and medical staff for the Cavs believed that Isaiah Thomas would overextend himself tomorrow if he played against Boston, so they're going to sit him. Other than that, I have really no interest. Kevin Love should be good to go. He's questionable, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll go. Um, it's an illness. Uh, maybe they sit him, which would... Which would pretty much make Tristan Thompson and Channing Fry locks if he sits. I mean, Fry will see 24, 25 minutes, and Tristan Thompson will probably see 26, 27 minutes. Um, and at their price tags, I can I can eat a crappy game from them. So moving on to San Antonio. Not a whole lot of interest here. No interest in the guards. Uh, Rudy Gay is out. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is questionable. Um... He's not going to play the back-to-back, -back, and they play again tomorrow, so it's really just a question of does he play tonight or does he play tomorrow. If he sits tonight, I have medium interest in Kyle Anderson. If he gives it a go, I really can't play him. Um, I know he's got that 40-point upside, but if he's only going to play 30 minutes, um, he hasn't been all that active on the rebounds and the assists. Um, so I'll probably just go ahead and keep fading him. I don't think he, I don't think it's worth the risk to force him in. Um, on FanDuel, Pow is interesting. On DraftKings, a little bit less. So that's about it for San Antonio. Moving on to the Knicks, starting off with guards. Tim Hardaway Jr. remains out. I like Jared Jack and Frank Nittalakina, as well as Courtney Lee tonight, but they draw tough matchups against the Spurs. So I probably won't go there, but I do like the three guards there. Uh, moving on to the forwards. I don't think I'm going to mess with Porzingis or Cantor. Um, I have a little interest in Michael Beasley in GPPs, uh, because if Cantor gets run off the floor, if the Spurs decide to go small and take Pow off, um, to reduce his minutes so that he can play tomorrow night, 
Um, Beasley would be the expected run, so I do like that. But those first two games, not really my favorites. So we'll get on to the juicy stuff, and that is the Atlanta Hawks. Looking to put a lot of Atlanta Hawks in my lineup. Dennis Schroeder will be in my lineup. Uh, 7,300 against the Suns. Um, should be locked and loaded for about 35 points minimum uh, with the 50-point upside. So I'll be all in on Dennis Schroeder tonight. Uh, I also like Torian Prince over Bazemore. I like Bazemore on FanDuel. He's cheaper on FanDuel, which is nice. So I do like Bazemore there. I do not like him on DraftKings. I'll be going to Torian Prince. really like Prince's safety that he's been providing with ginormous upside. Uh, and so I will be going to Torian Prince against Phoenix. Uh, we'll draw T.J. Warren defense, which isn't the greatest, but I still think I'll go there. So moving on to forward, you got a choice. You're going to go Ersan, Ilyasova, or John Collins. I'll be going John Collins. Um, I feel like he's just a little bit more safer. He doesn't provide a whole lot of upside, um, but I do think he provides a little bit safer of a floor than Ersan. But Ersan has um, a little bit higher of the upside of the two of them, but he also has a little bit lower of a floor. So it's kind of just how you want to go. If Urzan scores 20, um, it really kind of screws you, but I do really like John Collins tonight. Um, it's going to play a little bit less minutes than Urzan, which is the one issue. If he played as many minutes as Urzan, then I think we wouldn't have no problem beating out Urzan, but I do like John Collins a little bit more than Urzan tonight. Moving on to Phoenix, I don't really want to touch the roulette that is the big men. Maybe Alex Len because he plays every night anyway. You don't have to worry about them possibly sitting him. So if anyone at bigs, it's it's Alex Len. Devin Booker for me is just Fanduel. Um, he's 9,100 on DraftKings. Needs about 52. Um, Actually needs a little bit more than that. Like 53 or 54 to really kill you on DraftKings. And so I'll just go ahead and fade him, even though it's an extremely good matchup against the Hawks. Uh, TJ Warren, a little bit more FanDuel viable than he is DraftKings. Um, but he, he does have some intrigue over here on DraftKings. Probably more GPP than he is cash. He does provide a nice 40-point upside, but does draw Torian Prince defense. If he does somehow sw swing into the power forward and draws like... Ursan defense. Uh, I really do like him. So I'll have to keep an eye on it and see who and um, try to figure out exactly. I don't know if they played yet this year. I'll go back and look at some tape. But if Ursan was on him, um, I, I have a lot of interest in TJ. If it's going to be if it's going to be Ursan or if it's going to be uh, Prince or Bazemore, then I probably am not going to go to him. Uh, moving on to Charlotte. One another lock of the night. Dwight Howard comes in at 7,400. Every good matchup he has, he's pretty much smashed. Uh, had a tough matchup against DeAndre Jordan. Um, great matchup against the Warriors, crushed. Great matchup against Boston, crushed. Great matchup against Milwaukee, crushed. Um, I don't remember why he only played five minutes against Milwaukee there. Um, Toronto, medium matchup, didn't do well. New York, uh, not so great of a matchup, didn't do well. Portland, good matchup, did pretty well. Uh, Miami, that was without, oh, that was without Whiteside, so good matchup. He did pretty well. Uh, good matchup against Houston, did really well. Uh, so it's a good matchup tonight against Sacramento. No one should be able to stop him on Sacramento, so I'll be going to Dwight Howard. Um, other than that, Kemba at 7,500 is interesting, but probably just doesn't fit my, fit my build with Dennis Schroeder being 73. Batum, like I continue to talk about every time Batum plays, there's going to be huge blow-up spots for him. He just hasn't done it yet, which is the issue. He's more he's all GPP, no cash. Moving on to Sacramento. I like the guards for Sacramento. I like all four of them. I like George Hill. I like Buddy Heald. I like Bogdan Bogdanovich, and I like Garrett Temple. Um, all four of them are in play. It looks like I'm going to end up having Garrett Temple just because he gives me a price reduction. And in the current lineup I had, I had 3,800 left for a guard. So it ended up being Garrett Temple for what it's worth. For the forwards... And centers, um, Zach Randolph is like 5,100 on Vandal. Seems like a pretty much a lock over there, even though he's seen hugely reduced minutes um, than what he was playing near 28-34. Now he's down to low 20s, even into the 18s against Memphis in a revenge game, which I can't believe they didn't play him in the revenge game. But he didn't shoot well in that game, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's why. But... Willie Cauley Stein at 6,500. If Dwight wasn't on the slate, um, I would be locking in Willie Cauley Stein. He's been a lock for 35, 30-ish. Um, draws the tough matchup today against Dwight, but I still think he's good for for around 30 to 35. I might even try to smash him into my lineup, 
I mean, I can pull, let me pull the line up on my phone and see, I can tell you if I even, if it's, e if it's even possible to, uh, to smash him in. I mean, I have like Tyreek Evans, which we'll get into in the last game, which I could probably take out and then pay up from Garrett Temple, but I don't know. Maybe I play him over John Collins, just go a little bit safer, pay up over John Collins, and then I can come down from, um... So if we come down off of Tyreek, I know I could show this on screen, but let me just, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. Going down from John Collins, going down from Tyreek, it gives me 6,600, which doesn't leave you any guard you want to play. Um, yeah, it just doesn't leave you any guards you want to play. And so I also have Blake Griffin in the line as well, which we'll talk about in the next game. Um, but I also have Aminu, so I can come down off of Aminu. Um, I don't think it's actually possible to take, like, a crapper. Yeah, it just pushes it out. Um, I'd have to come down from a lot to fit in. But it is possible to get, uh, Kali Stein into my lineup. I do really like him tonight, but I don't know if I'll actually be able to smash him in. Um, I do like his chances, though, for 35, 40-ish points tonight. Because he will have to play. I doubt they throw out Scal against Dwight, um, so... I just I just like his chances tonight. Costa Kufis is interesting at 3,400. Um, it's going to play 15 to 20 minutes, um, so it makes him kind of interesting at 3,400. Moving on to the final game of the night, we have the Memphis Grizzlies against the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm going to avoid the big men in this game, so I'm going to cross out Marc Gasol. Um, the guards, it's really Andrew Harrison on Fandle more than DraftKings. He's 3,800 on Fandle. He's still 4,300 on DK. Um, probably won't go there with the guard value on the, um, Kings, but I do kind of like him. I like him a lot on FanDuel. He'll, he'll most likely be in my lineup on FanDuel. Uh, Tyreek Evans, just talked about having him in my lineup. Um, he's going to score you into the 20s, and then it's just a question of what does he do with the assists and the rebounds? Does he get you to a double-double? Does he get you to a possible triple-double? He's playing more point guard uh, with Mike Conley still sidelined, so I really want to have Tyreek Evans in my lineup tonight uh, with that 50 to 60 point upside for 8K. I really like that in cash games and GPPs. At forward, not much interest to me. It's pretty much just Tyreek Evans on the Grizzlies. Moving on to the Clippers, Austin Rivers is questionable. If he sits, it really doesn't change my opinion on this team. Milo's Tia Dosic is pretty much too overpriced for me. Um, his 30 points is like his upside. Um, and I just I, I just can't pay 5700 for Mil Milo's Tia Dosic, whether or not Rivers plays or not. Lou Williams at 7500 is really interest interesting if Tia Dosic does go or if Rivers does go ahead and sit. He gets a huge bump. He's not going to score 40 points again, but he's going to get I would guess upper 30s if if Rivers sits. He's going to get upper 30s. He's going to see a little bit of an assist bump. Uh, and so I do have interest in Lou Williams if Austin Rivers is a no-go. I'll probably go Lou Williams, Kali Stein over um, John Collins, Tyreek Evans. I know it's not like a perfect swap, but um, that's probably what I'll do. Uh, like I said, no interest in DeAndre Jordan. I'm just going to pass on that, especially with Blake back. I do really like Blake Griffin tonight. Um, I feel like he's really safe for 40. He doesn't need a whole lot to get there. He doesn't even need the double-double. He, and he's going to pick up assists. Blake's going to pick up somewhere between five or four to seven assists tonight, which is going to really help. Um, I don't expect the blocks and the steals as much. Maybe a steal, but not the blocks. Um, I'm not, I guess I expect them, but I'm not going to bank on them. Like, I, don't, I, I never bank on blocks and assists to get me to value for a guy. Like, Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gobert are about the only two expectations to blocks. Um, maybe Draymond. I do like Draymond. He, he usually gets blocks and steals. But other than, like, those three guys, I don't even... Capri, I, I just eliminate them as stats. Like, I just eliminate Bray Griff, Griff, Griffin's blocks and steals. So he scored 41.75 last game. Um, you can throw in one expectation for one of those stats to happen. So I'll give him 40... 43.75 which is pretty good for Blake Griffin. 80, 80, it's going to get you there. Um the issue is he does he doesn't provide a whole lot of upside at this price. That's the only issue. So I may end up going Willie Cauley Stein over Blake Griffin um just for that simple reason and paying up somewhere else because Blake provides you I don't know, he's going to provide you 6 
What am I trying to say? It's going to provide you about 45. We'll go with a baseline of 40 to 45. Kali's 9 is going to provide you a baseline of like 28 to 34. Okay, for 2k less, I can get about 10k less, which is 5x-ish, which which is about where it should be. So it, it's not like a pure, like, oh, Willie Kali Stein's cheaper and he's going to score X amount. So it's a better play than Blake Griffin, who was X amount and is going to score. But it, it, it's the salary that it saves you and it allows you to pay up at other spots. That's kind of my point. But I do really like Blake tonight. And if I can make it work, I will have him in my line. But guys, that's going to do it. Most of the plays are from the late games. I have Al Farouk Aminu, I believe, is my only play in the early games. Um, and then... All the rest of mine will be late, so I'll have the late night hammer, but I think so will most other people. But guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll be back with a first look for NFL tonight, um, and maybe even a look at PGA. But guys, that's going to do it. Peace out.